So today on Nation, we're gonna be talking about the bottleneck in your sales and how to overcome it, what you can do, how you can find out how to be better uh, if you're doing sales. Either way, stay tuned to WCR Nation. What's up everybody, Jersey here from WCRWindowCleaner.com and you are here. What is going on? Thanks for joining us. Hopefully if it's your first time you have a look around, you binge. Man, we had people all the time telling us that they're just going back and binging on episodes. That's absolutely awesome. Go and do that. You have tons and tons and tons and tons and tons of content to do. Go back and watch it all. If you are one of the elite, one of the nation, one of the cool kids, what's up? High five to you. Thanks for always watching, thumbs up in the videos on YouTube, and of course, buying your supplies through me. I am a sales rep for windowcleaner.com, of course. So if you want me to be a rep, which you do, give me a call or shoot me a text at 862-312-2026. That's a sell. So text me, whatever. Put it all in your cart. When you're ready to check out, just tell me and I'll run that for you. So if you stay tuned to the end of the show, I'm gonna give you a code for 5% off your entire order and free shipping. All you have to do is listen for that. I will give it to you, and then all you have to do is call me in order, and that's it, man. But today, we have an awesome, awesome guest today. Because I've talked to him a billion times, one of my most favoriteest people in all of the world, Mr. Curtis Kemp. What's going on, man? Hey, how you doing, Josh? That's the best intro I think I've ever had. I know, right? What's <laughs> up, man? I mean, a lot of these people that are watching or listening, um, they've probably seen or heard of you. Uh, but if they haven't, tell me, tell me who you are. Oh, well, who am I? Well, <laughs> uh, it all started back in 1979. <laughs> um, so, yeah, my name is Kirk Kimpton. I had a window cleaning and pressure washing company in the Phoenix area for like five years. And I sold that about five years ago. While I was running my cleaning company, I started systematizing my sales process. And that turned into a software called Responsibid, which is what I do full time now. And uh, the more I've gotten into response and helping service people to, you know, use our system to sell services, the more I've realized that response is just an avenue that you can use to sell your services. But there are some very distinct things that matter when you're selling services versus products. Yeah. You know, Amazon does certain things to sell products that, that don't quite translate to selling services. And people who sell luxury Lamborghinis do things that, a luxury carpet cleaner or window cleaner is not going to use. So uh, it's been a real exciting thing for me to sort of get involved in people. And it's been very fulfilling to help people to sort of take some of these principles and embed them into their uh, businesses so that they can realize, oh my gosh, I'm a company that sells services. A lot of people say I'm a window cleaner. In fact, when I had my window cleaning company, that's how I always introduced myself, introduced myself at parties. I'd say yeah. I'm a window cleaner, you know? Just to watch reactions. How will you treat me once you find out? Uh, what yeah, you're yeah, doing? yeah, like, hey, how are you doing? Like, oh, good. What, what do you do for a living? Oh, I'm a doctor. What do you do? I'm a window cleaner. Yeah. And that, that, in that instant, you can learn everything you need to know about that doctor, you know? Yeah, yeah. Socially. Yeah, and so, if people don't know, really, of all the people who are genuine in this world, you're at the top of the list, and you're actually one of those people who want to help people. Like, helping is actually, like, it brings you happiness to help people. So it's really pretty awesome to see this kind of, all merge into kind of what you're doing now. Yeah, it's super exciting. Like, like the mission of uh, Synthesize, the company that makes Responsibid, so my company, our mission is to restore order and enthusiasm to the blue collar worker. We just like to see the light come on, like for yeah. someone to go, oh my gosh, it doesn't suck to run a business. Because <laughs> you know how it is, you're, you're running around all day doing quotes, you, you go out and you hustle and you grind and you miss, you miss your kid's uh, soccer practice and you miss this and you miss that in your life and your wife never sees you and yeah. you're working as you know basically anytime the sun's up and maybe not even you know past then and like people get so beat down and it's just fun to like help people realize if you turn your business into a sales machine and it just sells the work those sales will fix all of your problems yeah what you know and then <laughs> it, it goes deeper than that but but really that's the genesis yeah yeah, it's no, not one person. If I'm wrong, like always, comment down below and tell me if I'm wrong. But there's not one person who likes every aspect of business. Like, no. I hate the office side of it. So guess what I did? Got people to do that side of it. I hate the mundane, like, stuffing envelopes and calling collections and 
got somebody to do that. Like that's kind of the whole premise is to kind of continue to do what you love a part of the business. Yeah. Yeah. It's like, it's like people, you know, financially what people do. I, and this is really common when I talk to people, this is like almost like a hundred percent hand raiser kind of situation. Like how many of you guys like doing the books? None. <laughs> how, uh, how many of you guys um, log into your account every day and give every dollar in your bank account a job to do? No. As a result, who here just shies away from logging into your bank account and just hope that every time you're on your card, it works it's like 75, 80% of people raise their hands. And I go, none of you should be managing money, right? Yeah. Like you let the money control you. And that's sort of like what I think all of us, like money is obviously a great example because no one, I don't think really, well, there are accountants that love tracking numbers and, <laughs> and actually you're one of those people too, Josh, but <laughs> For the most part, most people don't like it. And so what happens is, is that when you don't like something, you just ignore it. Yeah. And you let it just sort of do whatever it's going to do. And, um, you know, obviously that's not a recipe for success, but no. it, it feels less bad when we do it that way. Yeah. Well, here's the thing. The CEO of Coca-Cola has never made Coca-Cola. You know, like there's certain things you're really good at and there's certain things other people are better than you at. And it takes a smart person to kind of wrap yourself around that. And that's really what we're talking about today is like the sales bottleneck it's it's where people say that they've been selling or they're so busy doing work that they're not selling and they're missing out on all that where there's a bunch of automation first and foremost you know a ton about that like there's a lot of that stuff that helps you sell that's just like having another employee that helps you kind of get everything taken care of but yeah. i do have one question to kind of start this whole thing off sure i want to know from you I want to know how does somebody know what they're not good at? Because a lot of people are just under the assumption, oh, I'm fine. No, I'm good at it. I'm good at it. And those are the people who, like you said, they're not good at it, but they don't know that they're not good at something. Well, I think that there's a saying, you know, there's things that you know you don't know, and then there's things you don't know that you don't know, right? Yeah. The, the unknown unknowns. Um, the fact is, is that if you think you're good at something, there is a great probability that you're not good at it. And, and that is not a, that is not a slight to anyone, yeah, yeah. but you talk to a martial artist who's done martial arts for, you know, a month, they know they're not good at martial arts. Talk to someone who's done martial arts for a year or even two years. They'll tell you they're pretty good at martial arts. Move up to year five, six, seven, and then they'll tell you they're not good anymore. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And that's when you re realize, holy cow, there are guys that there's someone out there that just magician you know they're so much better than me and then it's not till they're like 20 30 40 years old where everyone else thinks they're amazing and they're a master and they still don't think they're that great yeah and i think the same could be said for probably almost every aspect of your business but here's here's a litmus test that i would say you could use is if you shy away from it like if there's a part of your business that you shy away from it probably means you're either not good at it or you're not passionate enough about it to want to keep doing it well. Yeah. So if you pay attention to what you're shying away from, that's the easiest litmus test because you'll figure that out. Then as your business kind of goes on and you start finding out what those bottlenecks are in your business, like, my gosh, you know, we keep getting callbacks. I'm not good at quality control, right? It'll manifest. And you can just listen to your business. And, and if you run your business like a CEO, You'll, you'll basically just have a stethoscope out every day, listening to the lungs of your business, listening to the heart, listening to the different parts and going, this part of the business is speaking to me. Yeah. And I got it to where it's at. Am I the guy who can get it past that? Or do I need to get someone else involved or I need a consultant or whatever, you know? Yeah. Yeah. I'm a huge, huge fan of, so I hate taxes. All my life, I hate taxes. I was burned because I had a bad accountant. It was one year he walked in and she was like, she always waited until the last minute too. She was like a friend of the family. So she was one of those. And it was like two days until uh, I think it was the 15th. Maybe it was one of the days, you know, sometimes it's not always on the 15th. And she goes, wow, you did really good this year. I said, wow, thanks. Yeah, thanks. Not understanding that what she meant is I owed a bunch of money. She's like, oh, so we need a check for like, you know, 22,000 something dollars or whatever. I'm like, hmm, come again? <laughs> yeah, you so, said I did good. How dare you? I forgot. I, you only do partially good and the government does good if you do good. But that was one of the big things. So from there, I just always, I hated taxes. Like I would be sleepless in the beginning of the year. I knew September or uh, January 1st came around. I knew it was all going to come down. 
I hated it. I hated it and I avoided it until the very last minute until I decided that at one time, you know what, I'm going to get a really good accountant that I'm going to go and talk to every single month because I hate this so much that I'm going to talk about it all the time. And you know something? It's absolutely epic. I'm like completely done for the year and the year's not even over. You know, like we're, it, it just takes that side of it. So finding somebody who is, like you said, passionate, sometimes you may be good at it. I could figure out QuickBooks. I could do my taxes. But being passionate about it, I'm not. Finding yeah. somebody who's passionate about it because you're paying them and that's their livelihood is huge. That's kind of where a lot of this stuff that people want to do it all because they feel like they don't have the money to not do it all. They burn themselves out because they wear too many hats. They hate business because now all of a sudden they're doing 50% of the stuff they're doing is the things that they absolutely hate. And yeah. it just doesn't work as a business owner. So how many people do you think have tuned out of this episode already? Because we've been talking about finances and taxes. Oh uh, yeah, that, absolutely. That's just what's <laughs> happening. And because uh, my voice is hard on the ears. <laughs> no, 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 but that's, that, that's it. There's a lot of people. I like the, that you said too. Um, people, how many people know what's in their bank account at all times or how many people just go and show up and they're like, should be good, you know, because yeah. they don't want to look at it. Yeah. yeah, yeah, it's true. Well, let's kind of go off of that bit because you're awesome in automation. We're going to kind of get to that in a second, but how do you sell yourself? So on top of everything, the bottom that comes in sales and if people aren't selling or they're not able to keep up the sales while they're really busting their hump to do the work, how do they go and do sales? Like how do you sell yourself in a way that is productive and efficient? Well, see, here's the thing. The bottleneck of your business, we, you know, you talked about that today. We're going to be discussing the bottleneck of your business. A lot of people we'll sort of see the bottleneck of their business is how many things can I clean per hour? So I need more gallons per minute. I need a, I need a taller water, water fed pole or a purification system that can do more purification. And while they're saying that they're only booked out for three days or four days, or they don't have anything on the calendar for tomorrow. Yeah. So the problem is, is that while yes, there are probably two to three to four months a year that you are booked out for months because you have a surge that everybody gets mm -hmm. and, and everybody does great during those times of year. Um, you just have to be able to breathe in order to do well those times of the year. The problem is, is that you can't fix a bottleneck that only happens three or four times a year and expect that to be holistic. Right. And so what I tell people is, is that if you can really truly the operation, no one's going to talk back to you. If you're buying equipment or if you're outfitting your van and I'm, I was totally guilty of this. I would make sure that my pressure washer setup was awesome and all the hose reels were mounted just right. And like, it's fun because you're creating, but no one's going to get mad at you. No one's going to do whatever. Now I'll tell you what, go knock on about 40 doors and fix the bottleneck of sales in your business. Yeah. And why don't you do that? Why don't you gravitate towards that? Yeah. It's unpleasant. Probably. It's the same yeah. reason you're not talking taxes. Yeah. People are going to answer the door and some people aren't going to like you. In fact, if only one in 10 people doesn't like you, you'll ignore the nine that did. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And, and honestly, door to door sales works very much reciprocal of that nine out of the 10 are going to hate you. But <laughs> one of those 10 people is going to give you money. Yeah. Right. Or one out of 20 and you won't find them unless you knock on the door or, or spend the time spending money on marketing or doing whatever it is to acquire customers. And the problem is, is because there's a pain element and because people are going to talk back to you and you're going to throw a bunch of clip flyers and people are going to call you telling you that you're littering and you're going to do stuff that's raising a ruckus and getting you business coming in and filling up your calendar. And yet you'll almost, you'd almost rather starve. I'd almost rather not have any book work on the books than run people the wrong way. And trust me as the guy who tries to be the world's nicest guy, I totally get that. Like I am not saying I'm not one of those people, but I am saying it's an, incre an incredibly interesting phenomenon that you must understand. And if, if you, if you'll at least, acknowledge it. You can do something about it. Yeah. Yeah. I, I love that concept. If you think about it, first off, I tell people all the time, don't advertise in winter. Like you can't sell a cheeseburger at six in the morning. It doesn't matter how much, how great the commercial is or where it's, nobody wants something. They're not going to have it. It's the same thing with selling hard in the winter. Like you could do your door to doors and route that sells all year round, but residential things you can't sell when they're not buying. So the times that are busy, at the times you have to go out there and sell. I know a lot of the guys, like you said, want to buy the more equipment so they can get more work done. But the problem is, is if 
right now, any one of you who are listening, if I somehow won the lottery and I gave you 50 work trucks completely decked out with, with uh, staff, with um, you know, the equipment, everything, they're still going to sit there. It doesn't matter how efficient or how much you can. You can get done 50 houses every hour with a lot of trucks, but if you don't have those, it doesn't matter. Yeah, and, and I think it's also important, you just really brought up a good point, is that most people who own a cleaning company, and I'm gonna include myself in that same category when I had mine, you view yourself as an operation business. But if you'll just stand back two steps and go, I'm a sales business that has operations. Like if you'll just really think about the truthfulness of that statement, you are in the sales business the reason is because, again, it goes back to that uncomfortableness. But if you viewed yourself as a sales business, you would look at those 50 trucks as a blessing. Like, oh, that's great. I, I can finally start all these sales that are coming in, all these leads that we're generating. We get, we get 100 leads a day. We close 33% of those, right? And you got it down to your numbers. You know your sales machine, and you're putting those trucks out on the road, and you're going. Someone who loses their business as an operation, ironically, you give them a great operation. What do they do? They go, you gave me so much yen. And I've got no yang. Yeah. Like, what am I supposed to do with all these trucks? I'm an operation business and you just gave me all the tools I need to operate, but I can't do jack. Yeah. Yeah, that's the big thing. When people ask, you know, what, what came first, chicken or the egg? If you look at it, I can give you a squeegee and a scrubber, but if you don't have the job to go do, it doesn't matter. Like, yeah. I can give you the knowledge. I can give you the best paperwork and the, the logo t-shirts and I can give you absolutely everything. But if the sale wasn't made, to close the person to have you do the work, then none of this matters. It's the first step to having anything and everything. The reason Amazon is Amazon is not because their website is, you know, they have yellow and their logo or that their logo is on everything or that it's because people go there and buy stuff. Once somebody buys something, now they need a facility to hold it. They need people to pick the stuff off the shelf. They need the boxes to send it. They need their postal. Show. They need all that because somebody sold the product somebody bought something yeah, it all starts with right. that that's right so i guess i guess where i would like to go from here josh is that if someone listening right now has a cleaning company and they're thinking to themselves so what i'm not a good salesperson i guess the part i want to mention is that i'm not a good salesperson either personally i don't consider myself a good salesperson and ironically i have a company 100% focused on sales <laughs> i'm a good sales system person, yeah. but, um, you know, I, I've, I've had some negative experience with salespeople who were slimy and I feel like my, I would never want my integrity called into question. So as a result, and, and maybe some of the listeners out there feel the same way, but like I always hesitated to come across as a salesy person and I don't want people referring to me as a salesperson because I am afraid that that automatically calls all of my integrity into question, mm -hmm. which isn't even true, which right. isn't even true. It isn't even true, right. but I believe it. Like yeah. in my core, it's like, oh, that's uncomfortable. Yeah. You know, salesman Ooh. is a dirty word sometimes. You think car salesman, you think some guy with his toothpick, you know, what can we do to get you in that car? What if we, you know, somebody's trying to hide something to get it done as opposed to explaining what a service that you offer and somebody can then make the decision if they need it. In fact, if you've ever bought a car from a good car salesperson who is super transparent and kind of follows all your values, you actually already know that a good salesperson does exist and is extremely useful and beneficial. Yeah. Like if he knows his cars and he knows how to get you the right price and he knows that and he's um, validating what your budget is and he's helping you with that, you know that that's almost indispensable. Yet because you had a negative experience, you won't even let that guy be weighted in your mind as like, oh yeah, salespeople can be good because you've already had the negative one. You're mm -hmm. just like breath of fresh air, but ignore that. This is the stigma I choose to continue to harbor, myself included. I've had a great salesperson. I had great salespeople. And I, I still can't shake it from my mind. Yeah. And so if someone's listening who has integrity, I, I hope that as our conversation goes on today, Josh, I want those people to understand that, that that's the people I'm trying to help. Yeah. Yeah. That's, that's, that's pretty awesome because everybody has to be a sales. You the thing with sales is that, yes, some people are salesmen. I'm a product specialist or a salesman. But the big thing is every one of us is a salesman because we have to sell ourselves. If you want a spouse, you have to sell your spouse on why you're awesome. If you want to have, 
you know, uh, 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 people over to your house for a cookout. You need to tell them why they're coming over to your house. You need to sell yourself for everything, not just business. Yeah. You have if you to. have kids and if you have kids, you're selling all day, every day. Oh my gosh. Yeah. Why do they have to go to bed at eight 30? Well, yeah. Sell yeah. It. Sell and why can't it. I go out on my friend? Like sometimes you're selling them on the, <laughs> what they can't do. Yeah. But yeah. Fact is, is that, uh, you're right. Like we're all in sales. Yeah. Well, let's, let's go off this one. So we know that sales are important. We know that we suck at them. Some of us, some of us better than others. And some of us just don't even do it because we hate it so much, which by the way, I have to say, and I think this, I can't remember his name and I don't even want to bring it up, but it was a guy who said, uh, one of the episodes he commented down below and he said, um, I don't call or send postcards or talk to any of my previous customers because I don't want to sound salesy. If they ever want me, they just come back. Like mm. you're letting yourself ride the boulder to the bottom. You're not, you're not getting your company out there. If people need their windows cleaned or want you, you're helping them by telling them that you're the greatest and telling them why. So, so I'm going to just kind of follow one of the analogies we just did. And I'm going to parallel it with what you just said. Yeah. That guy, he's my brother. Like that's, that's the kind of guy I was yeah. when I owned my cleaning company. And maybe even to a degree, the guy I still am. but. That's to say that you go on your first date, you fall in love with a woman and you don't want to ask her out again unless she calls you. It's to say, I disciplined my child one time, but I'm never going to call them out on that again because I would hate for them to learn that lesson a second time and for me to look overbearing. Yeah. And it would be to say, really, in anything in your life that's worthwhile, you had to do it multiple times yeah. in order to ingrain it in yourself or in the other person. And you had to do it to be able to create the mass and the problem is, is that guy's got a good heart. I can tell he's not, he's like, I'm trying to be respectful of my customers. Yeah. But the part he's not realizing is, is that your business was made for you to serve people. Yeah. And if you are waiting for people to come to you and ask to be served, you are never going to be very good at serving people. Yeah. If your business is to help people have clean windows or to have enough free time on the weekend to play golf or to entertain. If that's your business and helping people, you're not helping anybody. If no one's knows about you or nobody's gotten you, I completely understand. Let's yeah. for a second go into response So th that, so you have an event coming up, just touch on it real quickly. Tell us what it is. When is it? Give us all the details and then we'll kind of go off of that. Okay. So the details is it's the ultimate selling conference for service companies. It's where you go to learn to sell your services the best and execute them. It's January 30th through February 1st, 2020 in Phoenix, Arizona. And if you're a responsive user, you have to come because there will be things talked about that will help you in your software. Nice. If you're not a responsive user, you have to come. Because if you sell services, you're going to be learning things that don't require any software that will help you to structure and organize the thing that you're probably not naturally either gravitating to yourself or maybe even that, that like you've just allowed talent to be, which talent is so overrated. Like, oh, I'm not a gifted salesperson. Well, I'll tell you right now, you're, I already told you I'm not a good salesperson. Yeah. But I'll tell you what I've learned is that having a selling system in place makes it so that when I don't feel comfortable reaching out to someone who's already had my services, every six months, I still reach out to them because my system's doing it. Yeah. And it doesn't have to be through responsibility, it can be through other things. But the point is, is that if you're gonna prioritize the sales in your business, you need to come and talk to uh, lots of industry experts, lots of different vendors who can help you to automate certain parts that maybe you're a little yucky to you, um, but will still have your DNA all over it. Um, and to, to talk with other business owners, really that's the whole thing. This is gonna be a major networking event where you can go to people and actually bounce ideas off of each other and hear best practices that are working in other parts of the country that may or may not work in your part of the country, yeah. but you'll be able to bounce them all around. Yeah, uh, and it's also in an area that uh, is cheap to fly into. The hotels are awesome. Everything, this is not an expensive excursion for you guys. This is, can be a, just a, a learning experience in the middle of winter when a lot of us aren't crack lacking anyway. So <laughs> it's really uh, pretty awesome there, but uh, tell us the website one more time so you can go to it. Yeah, just go to responsibid.com and then right there on like the second part of the page is get your Responsicon tickets or, or learn about Responsicon. Yeah. I will say, you just talked about the cheap airport and everything else. Phoenix in January and February is awesome. Okay, so that part is 100% true. Yeah. The other part to understand is that you said it's not a really expensive thing. This is a nonprofit 
you know, it's a sales conference. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> not for profit. So you would think that I'd be trying to make a ton of money off of this. What I did was I got the hotel to get us all the room that we need for 200 people. We only have about 75 seats left. Um, and then I said, I want all this food brought in because I want the people to not have to leave. So breakfast and lunches will all be provided. The problem is the hotels charge $60 a plate for food. Yeah, so, yeah. so you're basically paying a little bit for the room that we're meeting in, a lot for the food that you'll be eating, and then nothing to response of it. Like yeah. we're doing this as an industry, you know, we're trying to help it out. If I don't sell all 200 tickets, I'm paying the difference, which yeah. I committed to up front because I believe in it that much. It's that important. But at the same time, I can't imagine like this is, this is what I needed when I had my cleaning company. Oh my gosh. Yeah. Yeah. And, and let's talk about that for a second. The, auto, the, the automation is one of my favorite things in business, like getting into automation and, and having things, having softwares and having people and having all that stuff to just work and do what it's supposed to do saves not only so much time, it takes hats off. It, it just does all of that with this conference. Tell us real quick, kind of a bunch of the people who are going to be there that they can see. So first off, of course, responsibility, which yeah. by the way, uh, I'll post it down in the bottom of the video. But if you want to get in responsibility, we do, you do have a, um, like a friends of the page type thing. I'll post that down below, but tell us kind of who else will be there. Yeah. So there'll be, there'll be quite a few speakers. A lot of the speakers admittedly are going to be people you've never heard of who use responsibility and kick butt every day in their business. Nice. I've asked them to speak about certain things that they're really, really good at to share that. So one of the biggest headlines of responsibility is the no namers. And it sounds funny, but I promise you, you're going to be like, wow, the reason that guy's not online bragging about how awesome he is, is because he's out freaking being awesome. Busy. Yeah. yeah. Um, also, we're going to have people you've heard of. Brandon Vaughn is going to be speaking quite a few different times about different sales approaches he used to, to build his business up from 100 grand to well over a million dollars a year in, in business. Uh, Jason Evers is going to be there. He's, uh, he's built and sold a really large cleaning company and just recently started another cleaning company in a totally oh, wow. different world. Um, I believe Pat Clark is going to be there sort of talking about mass marketing and getting things out and about. We're going to have Matt Adwell. He nice. built his, his business to the exact size he wanted. And then he just backed out. Like he's now running his business basically completely hands-free. Um, and he's using responsibility to do it, but he has a lot of systems. He's integrated into responsibility that work really, really well. And it provides for his family in Annapolis, uh, really well. Um, I, I feel terrible because I'm sure there's about a, a hundred other people that I should be mentioning. But the yeah. point is, is that there's going to be great speakers, but here's the problem with every conference, Josh, you go to a conference and most conferences are going to talk about more like operations or just business in general. And you take down all these notes, then you go home. You close the notes, you get on the airplane, you hang out with your family. You've got all this work that's been piled up since you were gone. You get into it and all that order of enthusiasm that you had while you were sitting in the clarity of that room is gone, gone, never to be seen again. And so I wanted to make this conference totally different. I want to have the room of inspiration where speakers are giving you ideas and feeding you all that and just filling all of your hunger up. And when you're full and you're like, ah, I can't even absorb anything. You take that notebook into the next room and it'll have it divided up into a bunch of like 20 different little rooms with five tables with five chairs around them with a whiteboard and each room will have a little topic and you can go into the room with a topic that you want to work on yeah. and you'll have just a small group of people, other business owners who are talking on that topic, helping you to integrate a new follow-up system or a new call script or a new uh, postcard idea or a new uh, package formation of your services or whatever it was that you are super inspired about. You can go sit down, get it knocked out in this room, go eat lunch with those people at the table, eating the ridiculously expensive food. <laughs> and then, and then when you get on the airplane, you go home, you got notes, but you got stuff done. Like yeah. your follow-up scripts are done. Your, your video, there'll be videographers there. There'll be a copywriter there to help you write video scripts or email scripts or phone scripts or whatever. And You'll go in and you'll record a video. You're going to go home with a video to put on your website that sells your unique selling proposition that you came up with while you were there. Wow. Nice. <laughs> nice. That, uh, again, if you guys haven't been to an event at all, go to an event, go to business oriented event. Just the little ones are fine, but the big ones, the, the events that are well thought out are a lot better than the, you know, events that are 
free, 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 that you go and show up to some place and, and, and hope to learn something. There are events that are surrounded by people who know what they're doing, know what they're talking about, and are genuinely there to help. So this is one of them. If you haven't gone or haven't heard of it, this is, this is one of the, the big ones every year. Absolutely. Yeah. I would say, I would say if, you, if you sell services and you think you're pretty good at it, come and bring your value. But I promise you that you, and your value is important. We need as much value in that room as possible. The reason this is a nonprofit is because I'm bringing the facility together, but I'm not going to facilitate all the knowledge. The most of the knowledge that's going to happen is going to be user to user, person to person. Yeah. And so bring your knowledge, but I guarantee you, you will not get on that airplane having put more into the cup than you're going to get out of the pitcher. Nice. If that makes any sense. Nice. Well, let's for a little bit, let's just for a second, jump off topic and talk about responsibility because we're talking about not being able to sell your services or funnel, you know, not having the most efficiency side of that. Absolutely. This is not something that I told you we were even talking about, but responsibility is genuinely one of my favorite products that has ever come out in the industry or for just any type of industry stuff. It is not only sexy, uh, but the program works infinitely well, so stinking well that I tell people, I've sold jobs at two, three in the morning. Like, I don't know why people are up at that time. I don't care. The tire kickers, they got jobs done. I called them in the morning just to confirm and talk to them real quick, and it was done. If you bought stuff off Amazon, then that's why there can be kind of that online stuff. But talk about automation and why automation in your service business is so important. Like, Why is it so important to take those hats off, the responsibility, and to kind of just automate? So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to give you sort of an analogy here that – should make a lot of sense. But imagine if you had to hire four employees in order to manage your sales process. Imagine you have the person who's putting together the proposals and taking, getting the prices together and presenting it. Imagine that you have the person who every time a proposal is given out, they're the one following up with that person and, and making sure that they either say yes or no. And if they say yes, then you follow up with them appropriately. If they say no, you follow up with them after they've had crappy service and, and get them back anyway. Imagine if you hired a person whose complete job was to make sure that every job was scheduled as efficiently as possible. And, and we all have that office manager. It takes five years to train him to figure out how to, how to schedule properly. And then imagine if there was a person whose job was to make sure that your data was entered properly in your CRM every time. Well, Responsibid, our goal is for your monthly cost of Responsibid to have all four of those people working for you. They'll never call in sick. They don't have any family drama. There's no baby mamas involved or baby daddies. Anyway, <laughs> the point is I haven't, uh, I haven't had a lot of experience with that part, but my point is, is that responsibility is designed to make it so that you put information into it and it kicks out a proposal that is good, better, best. Bye, 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 bye this business. And as soon as they go to say, yes, I want to buy it. It automatically looks at all the jobs that are located near that person. It figures out which crew is the right crew to assign it to, or which crews to could do it. And then it, gives opportunities for the calendar to pick a date and a time. Yeah. You can do it from your website. You can do it over the phone. You can do it out like what with your phone or tablet while you're out giving bids. And, and now the job is scheduled efficiently. And then we're going to follow up. If they don't book, we're going to follow up. If they do book, we're going to follow up. If they tell you, I, I don't know, it'll follow up. If it says reach out to me in two months, it'll follow up. You know how it is when people say, call me back in two months. We're yeah. doing construction right now. And you never call them back. Like that's the idea. No breadcrumbs hitting the floor. Yeah. And the last thing is that we connect to CRMs like Java or customer factor service monster. And so responsible will automatically take the information it knows from the sales process and it'll build a work order, schedule the job in the calendar, you know, whatever it needs to be. And it'll stay connected so that your sales process is fully contained in responsibility and it kicks it out to your operational software where all your invoices and scheduling and all that stuff happens. It's absolutely I mean, you've been working on it years and years and years, but it just, it's flawless. I mean, not to you guys, you probably see every little thing that you want. I have warts. We got warts, man. We got warts. <laughs> yeah. It's absolutely incredible. It literally is the most invaluable employees that I have. Like I've, I've sold more work. The work that I sold was paid for. I've had literally people who had booked and we were just talking about this. Hey, hey you want to know something funny? I booked with you guys. I didn't even check with anybody else. I thought the process was so stinking cool that I just booked it. I said, if these guys have this, then they're going to be awesome at everything. Like this kind of stuff sells. If you have, you know, a um, wrapped truck and you think that that does something, have a system like Responsibility on your site 
and it just blows people away. But anyway, I don't mean to talk about that, but I really do genuinely think <laughs> if you guys haven't checked it out, do it. Uh, put it on there. Work on it even over the winter. There's training available to kind of walk you through everything. It's absolutely awesome. You can continually kind of hone in your prices and change them on the fly. You can do all that. It's absolutely awesome. Again, uh, we'll put a link in there so you know, but call, call Kurt. That, that's huge in itself. And when you're at ResponsaCon, you can just talk to him about it then, right? So let's say that someone listening right now is like, should I buy ResponsaCon or should I go to ResponsaCon? I'm going to tell you go to ResponsaCon. Yeah. Okay. And the reason I'm going to say that is because the system and, and unpacking your brain and refining your system, that's the most important part. Yeah. Responsibility is like a machine or a mechanism that you can plug all that stuff into and it'll automate stuff. It'll do all sorts of really cool stuff while you're asleep. It'll follow up with your customers and sell jobs in the middle of the night. The people who respond to emails and you, you find out most people aren't even doing a lot of business during your business hours, but that's cool. And responsibility is so cool. But you know what? If you don't have a sales system, get rid of responsibility, get your sales system right. Yeah. Now, if you want to do both, you're going to be happy because winter time is the time to be organizing all that stuff and getting responsibility automation and all that stuff all programmed out and working with our sales trainers to help you to unpack your brain and put it in there. It's, it's phenomenal. But if you can only do one, if you can only do one of the two, you got to come to Responsicon. Yeah. That's that's the most important step forward you're going to take. It can change your life. Like not just, you know, cheesily. It can, if you can open someone's mind or really every one of us in business, if we've been in business long enough, had that one thing where all of a sudden we were enlightened and having that is absolutely epic. So go and do that. We're not going to take up any more of your time. So I do appreciate Kurt for being here. Um, but if you have any questions on this, please do check out all the websites, go to it. I'm telling you it's almost sold out already. I know everybody goes, ah, oh, it's sold out. We're going to buy any more. He's not buying any more spots. There is no more spots. I don't have any more room. <laughs> this is it. This is it. So go and get one of the tickets. I'm telling you, it's going to be absolutely awesome. You get to see my buddy, Bobby Walker. You get to see Kurt. You know, you get to do everything that you possibly want, but it is absolutely an epic event. So go and definitely do that. And here it is. If you want 5% off your order, when you call me, all you need to do is tell me response a bid. You tell me that and you get 5% off your order plus free shipping if you call me 862-312-2026. Put it all in your cart. Call me or text me and say, yo, Jersey, everything's in my cart. Go ahead and put it in. Response a bit and you'll get that discount. So do that. It doesn't cost you any extra and it's like a virtual high five. So thank you very much. When this show airs, we will be over 100,000 listens alone on the podcast side. So that's pretty awesome. Just want to say thanks for all of that. And uh, thank you to you, Mr. Curtis Kempton, for, uh, for everything. Thank you for having me. This has been fun. Yeah, definitely, man. All right, guys, we'll go out there and do everything we said because it's all very, very important. But until next week, go out there and be epic.